last time I showed you how to create an animal hide after reading the story, The Legend of the Indian Paintbrush. Well, today we're going to use that animal hide, the fake animal hide, or the faux animal hide that you made last week, to draw our own legend. And we're going to be using real Native American symbols to do that and translate them into our own story. All right, so let's so get started. So I have my animal hides here from the last time. And uh, they're wrinkly, just like real animal hide, and they even kind of have the shape of our animal hide. Now, what you're going to need are some translation sheets, which if you're following me on Seesaw, um, you will see some photocopies that have some symbols, and they often have the words written underneath. If you're joining me in class, you will see... I'll be handing out some of these sheets to you. So you might want to look these over before you get started so that you have an idea about what your story could look like. So read through those. Now the interesting thing about this is this is kind of the way that Native Americans would have written um, down important events that had happened to them. They don't have a symbol for every word. Um, and I'm sure there's actually more symbols out there um, and you probably could find some on the internet as well. So what what they really are, if you look at them closely, is they're just little pictures. Um, and some of them are quite easy to figure out what they are. For example, uh, this is a turtle, which looks like a turtle. And this is a fish. Some of them are a little trickier to figure out. Uh, for example, sad is a circle inside a circle. And then happy is it's the same thing, but with lines going out. So you might want to look these over before you get started. And I have done that. Um, and I'm going to actually draw mine, uh, my picture with either crayon. You can draw it with crayon or colored pencil. Or even a marker if you would like to. Um, it does not matter which thing you use. If you use one color of marker, then perhaps when you're done, you can go back and add color to it later. All right, so usually when I start my picture, I like to start with the time of day um, or the weather. So the time of year, clear weather, rain, snow, no rain, storm. Um, they could have the sun or the moon, and that is really up to you. You can also decide who the characters may be in your story are going to be. There's man, woman, boy, girl, or maybe it's about animals like the fish, the eagle, or the turtle. So you can kind of take a look at that. I think I'm going to start with the sun. Now, if the color, hmm, I'm looking at this yellow, it's not really showing up very well on my picture. I like the color yellow, but for a sun, it's not completely showing up. So I might have to take a darker color. You could even do this with black if you wanted to. And I'm going to draw my symbol for sun, which is located right here on my sheet. So it was a sunny. I don't have the word for it was, so I'm just drawing the sun. In my picture, it's going to be a sunny day. I could tell you the time of day because I believe there is a symbol on one of my sheets that has the time of day. Oops. Here it is. Morning, noon, or night. Maybe I'll start my story off in the morning. So I will draw the symbol for morning. So sunny morning. If I'm using pencil like this, I sometimes go back and forth over the lines just to make sure you can see. Now if you want, you can use crayons as well. I'll show you what that looks like. Maybe you have both things at where you're working and you want to try um, using both, that is up to you. So if I choose, I think I'm going to put some people in my story. I'm going to choose a man. And so I will draw a symbol for man. Maybe I'll do orange. I like to change my colors as I do this just to make the picture um, and my animal hide seem a little more lively. A little more exciting to look at than if it were just one color. So we've got sunny morning and there's a man. And maybe I should have a whole family. Maybe I can draw a woman. and draw her in purple because why not? Purple is a nice color. Even though I know people really are purple. But maybe she liked the color purple. 
All right, and you can also do children. So I think I will do, you just draw them the same way, which is an X, the line, you just draw them smaller. So well, maybe I'll have a whole family in my story. So you can see crayons seem to be working just as well as colored pencil. And I think they look very nice. I like how this one is colored in. So maybe I will go back and I can color in some of my shapes where I have them. Oh, let's use a different color for this. So I think coloring them in just makes it look even better. All right, so once I have my pictures here, I can keep going so it's a sunny morning now something should happen in my story so maybe so on this paper I've got some symbols uh, going returning those are actions you could even have um, one that says hunt okay you could have all of those in your story you can choose one I will say I think I'm going to have going so my family's going, so it's just as a person walking. So this whole family is going. Let's see where they're going. Going. Oh, here's a symbol for path. I think I'll switch colors and maybe I'll do my path in red. Which is a curved line. And while they're on the path, perhaps they see something. I think there is a symbol for look, which is almost the same. Maybe they're looking around and I wonder what they're going to see. This is something I can think about while I'm drawing. I'm going to try to fill up as much of my paper. I think they are going to see, ooh, some birds. Do some green. Birds, a symbol for bird are bird tracks. I wonder what else they could see on their walk while they're going on the path. Maybe, ooh, how about a river? They could find a river. Sometimes when I have a symbol like river, I, even though it's not a shape, I sometimes like to use another color and just kind of fill that in between the lines. It's sometimes tricky to color on the wrinkly paper here, but I really do think it still looks nice if you go slowly and take your time. Uh-oh, in my story, I think something should happen. Oh, maybe they see, maybe they see many fish there. The symbol for, for many fish is a fish with some lines. And I'm starting to run out of room, so I need to start thinking about how I can wrap up my story or finish it. So by now, I think in my story, it's going to be nighttime, which is, there's a symbol right here for night. So the sun is, must be going down in my story. Maybe I'll draw this part like the sun. It looks like a sun setting. And this must be the sun. So that they're so they decide to return home. Let's have them going back home. It's just somebody facing the other way, isn't it? I will write a teepee for their house. 
So I'm going to draw an X again. And another X. I think I will color in the TV. There's the TV. I think I'm also going to have them building, since it's nighttime, I'm going to have them have a campfire and the symbol for campfire. The symbol for campfire is two lines crossed like an X with some zigzags. I think that looks like logs. I'm going to make it kind of small so it fits right next to my TV. The X. And I think this one looks kind of like fire, so I'm going to do kind of a zigzag. And if mine doesn't match it perfectly, I don't get too worried about that. Maybe some yellow underneath so it looks kind of like real fire. I think this seems like a pretty happy story. So they're all home. They had a nice walk. So I think I will draw a, the symbol for happy, which is a circle. And another circle inside with lines going out. And once you run out of room, you can be done with your story, which I think I've filled up my paper quite nicely here. Maybe I'll fill this in too. If you see anything that needs to be colored in at the end, this would be a great time to go and do that. And after you get your story done, I always like to take, because remember how it was sewn to that frame? I like to take a little line and draw a broken line right around the edge so it looks like it's been sewn where the stitch lines were. I'm going around the perimeter of my animal hide. Perimeter just means around the outside, not in the middle. If I have a drawing that came close to the edge. I'm going to be careful not to draw through that. I going all the way around. And it helps to kind of put your fingers right next to where you're drawing. That way the paper kind of holds still for you. And the last step, boys and girls, is to, to glue this, if you can, to another piece of paper. So if you have another piece of paper that you can glue your animal hide to, it's a great idea to glue it onto this just to kind of keep it a little, instead of letting it be so uh, soft, it keeps it a little more sturdy, it will last a little longer. So I'm going to put some glue on the back. If you have liquid glue, that works great too. I always use just a little bit extra when I'm doing this because the paper is wrinkly. So that it doesn't fall off of there. Turn it over. Press down. Make sure you don't have any of it hanging off the edges and if it is, then move it. Press down. I always like to turn it over and massage. Massage that. While I've got it turned over, this would be an excellent time for you to write your name. So one thing that's kind of fun about dark paper is if you use a white crayon, you can still see it. And you can also write your teacher code um, if you want to write. You know what? Down here I might write animal. I'm going to pretend like these are made out of sticks. Animal. This is not something you have to do, but if you would like to 
right animal hide they have just enough room over in this corner making very straight lines like it was made out of sticks ID would normally curve but because it's out of sticks I think I'm gonna take make my letters extra fancy I'm gonna go around the outside with my white now this is not something you have to do but if you feel like you want to make them look like they're made out of birch birch tree is a kind of tree that has white bark and it also has some black lines sometimes on it. It's a unique kind of tree. I'll show you what this looks like when I'm all done. So this is what my finished Native American animal hide looks like. Uh, make sure that you draw some symbols on your animal hide, um, that you draw the broken line around the outside. If you're able to glue it to another background, darker piece of paper so that it has a nice contrast, um, if you can't do that, it'll be fine. I also, just as an option, drew the words animal hide, but that is up to you whether or not you would like to do that. And it doesn't have to be at the bottom. If you'd rather have it at the top, you could also do it that way. All right, I hope you had fun translating Native American symbols onto your animal hide for your own legend or your own story. Remember, when you're finished with your artwork, if you're one of my students, you can always send it to me on Artsonia or on Seesaw. I love seeing your artwork. It makes my day. So I hope you had a fun day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!